Hello everyone, this is Wes James, and I'm bringing you another awesome Final Cut Pro effect. In today's tutorial, we're going to pause, rewind, and play our footage. Here's what the final result looks like. I'm here in Final Cut Pro, and I have a clip in my timeline. It's stock footage of a snowboarder doing a leap in the air. This is an SD clip, but like I always say, this can be done in HD as well. I'm looking to purchase some stock HD footage in the near future, so hopefully I won't have to repeat this every single time. I'm going to find a moment to create a freeze frame. Right here, at the out point, is where I'm going to be creating my freeze frame. Hit the keyboard shortcut shift N to create a freeze frame. Give it a duration of about 15 to 20 frames. After you've done that, perform an overwrite edit. Next, select the footage and hold, the, and hold on Option and Shift and drag to the right to create a duplicate. Hit the keyboard shortcut shift N to create another freeze frame at the endpoint of the, of the clip. Give that a duration of 15 to 20 frames as well and drag it into the timeline. Select the clip one more time, hold down Option and Shift, and create another duplicate by dragging to the right. Drag its duration until it's at a point where you want to end the clip. We're going to end it right there. The next thing we need to do is we need to go to, back to our first duplicate of the footage, select it, and hit the keyboard shortcut Command J to enable the speed options. Click on the reverse checkbox to allow for the speed change to play in reverse. Change the rate from 100 to somewhere between 125 or 150. Next, we need some noise for our rewind clip. So if you go to your viewer window, go to your generators tab, scroll down to render, select the second noise generator. Set the duration of the noise generator to match the length of your speed change. Mine is one second, six frames, so we're going to change it to that. And drag it into track two. Hit command two to go to the canvas window, and let's hit command minus to bring the size of the window down a bit. Press the C key to enable the crop tool. Select the noise generator. Go to your canvas window. Hold on the command key and drag from the top. Holding on the command key allows you to drag uniformly from left to right or from top to bottom. Let's double click this noise generator to bring it to the viewer. Go to the motion tab, go to the crop parameter, and make sure your top and bottom parameters are at 45. Next thing we need to do is set some keyframes. So hit shift I to go to the endpoint of the generator. Set a keyframe there. Move the playhead about 20 frames, and set another keyframe. Hit Shift O to go to the out point, and set another keyframe. Hit Option K to go to the second keyframe. Change the value in the top from 45 to 50. If you press on the right arrow, you'll see that our noise is moving up and down ever so slowly. Let's add a color corrector to our noise generator. Go to your effects browser, go to video filters, Go to color correction, select the color corrector, and apply it to your noise generator. Double click to bring it into the viewer, go to the color corrector tab, and let's bring down the blacks a bit. Let's duplicate this generator twice. Hold Option and Shift and drag up to tracks 3 and 4. Let's position these generators. Position each noise generator so they take up thirds of the screen. So I'm going to select the third one, hold down the shift key, and drag it to a third of the screen, like so. Let's select the first noise generator, and drag, holding down shift, drag it to the other third of the screen, like so. Let's change the appearance of our reverse playing footage. Go to your effects browser, go to video filters, scroll down to stylize, and select bad TV, and apply it to your rewind clip. Double click to bring the clip into the viewer, 
And let's change a few parameters in the filters tab. Change the waviness from 10 to 42, the roll to 0, and the static to 0.43. With the clip playing in reverse with a bad TV filter and a noise generator simulating a VCR rewind, the effect is almost complete. Let's add some pause, rewind, and play symbols. But before we do that, let's nest our noise generator. So select all three noise generators in the timeline, hit the keyboard shortcut option C to nest, and change the name from tutorial sequence 2 to noise, and hit OK. Go to your project browser. I provided a pause, rewind, and play symbol button PSD for you guys to follow along, so you could download the link at the bottom of the project description. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to select this in our project browser, and let's duplicate it twice by hitting the keyboard shortcut, Option D. Once you've done that, rename each of them the following, Pause Symbol, Rewind Symbol, and Play Symbol. Once you've renamed each of the sequence to Pause, Play, and Rewind Symbol sequences, Double click to bring them into the timeline. Let's double click the pause symbol to bring it into the timeline. Since I've grouped all the symbols together into one PSD file, all we need to do is go from sequence to sequence by soloing the items we need. So for the pause symbol, let's select the pause text, shape one copy, and shape one. Hit the keyboard shortcut control S to solo. So now all you see is the pause symbol and the pause text. Hit control W to close the sequence. Let's go into the play sequence to do the exact same. We need a button for our symbols, so let's create one here in Final Cut Pro. If you go to your viewer window, go to the video tab, go to your generators tab, scroll down to your mat, and select color. We need to change the duration of our color solid so that it matches our first and second keyframe duration and the duration of our rewind clip. So if you move the playhead in the timeline to the endpoint of our first freeze frame, hit F12 to perform a superimpose edit. Move to the second freeze frame and perform F12 once again. Move to the endpoint of our rewind clip and let's change the track panel from V1 to V2 and hit F12 one more time. So now we have color solids on our freeze frames and our rewind clip. Let's change the parameters of these accordingly. Double click the first color solid to bring it to the viewer. Go to your motion tab and change the scale from 65, the aspect ratio in the distort menu from 0 to 19, and the opacity to 72. Let's bevel the solid a bit. Go to your effects browser, go to video filters, Go to Border, Bevel, and let's apply it to our first solid. Our solid now looks like a button you would see in a remote control, which is good. Let's duplicate the parameters of this solid to the other two solids in our timeline. Right click, select Copy, select the other two solids by holding in Command. Hit Option V to paste attributes. Let's paste our basic motion, our distort, our opacity, and our filters. Now, all of our buttons across the timeline will all look the same. So the next thing we need to do is to bring our symbols into our sequence. So if you go to your project browser, select the pause symbol sequence and drag it into your viewer. Since we have multiple tracks from our original sequence, we're going to have multiple patch panels for the time being. So all we need to do in order to get the pause sequence into our timeline is hit the keyboard shortcut F12. Track 1 is currently patch to track 2. So if hit F12 to perform a superimpose. And there you go. Option double click to bring the pause sequence into the viewer. Go to the motion tab. Let's change a few parameters. Bring the scale down until it's in the center of the button. Alright, so it's perfectly centered in our button. We're going to repeat this step again for our rewind symbol and our play symbol. So let's change the patch panel from track 2 to track 3. Let's go to our viewer window, let's go to video, and let's drag in our rewind symbol into our viewer. Once again, we have multiple tracks patched, but since we have track 1 patched to track 3, all we have to do is to superimpose edit. So move the playhead to the endpoint of the rewind clip. Let's go to the viewer window and hit F12 to perform a superimpose edit. And once again, we have our rewind symbol on top of our noise. Right click, select copy, 
Let's paste attributes to the symbol. Hit Option V to paste attributes and select basic content for our, our paste attributes and hit OK. So now our rewind is the same size as our pause symbol. Let's repeat this step one more time with the play symbol. So if you go to your project browser, drag it into the viewer. Let's change the patch from track three to track two. Let's move the playhead to the endpoint of our other solid in our second freeze frame. Let's hit F12 to perform a superimpose edit. Select the play symbol sequence and hit Option V to paste attributes. Since we already pasted attributes from one clip to another, the paste attributes is still functional for this as well. So all we have to do is select basic motion and hit OK. So now all of our symbols are the same size and they're in the center of their respective buttons. We now have our elements in place, but our rewind clip needs some audio. I have some audio from Soundtrack Pro that I converted into a WAV file for smooth integration. Remember, whenever you do audio in Final Cut Pro, it's best to bring in an AIFF file or a WAV file. So I have it in my project browser in my audio folder. It's called Type Rewinding 03 if you need to find it in Soundtrack Pro. Double click it to bring it to the viewer. And let's drag it into our timeline. Increase or decrease the length of the rewind audio to match the duration of your rewind clip. So let's drag it, drag it to the out point. Select the out point and hit the keyboard shortcut Option Command T to perform an audio cross dissolve. Select the audio cross dissolve and hit either Option 1, 2, or 3 to reposition it. I'm going to go with Option 2 for mine. With the audio cross dissolve selected, hit Control D to change its duration. Let's change the duration from 1 second to about 10 frames and hit OK. All right, so we have, re we have some audio for a rewind clip. We have some buttons and we have some symbols. So all we have to do now is render this. So let's hit Option R to render all. I'll be back with you guys in a few seconds. All right, I'm back. Let's move our playhead to the endpoint of the first clip. Press L or spacebar to play forward to see what we have. All right, we have a nice pause, rewind, and play effect to use when we perform freeze frames and speed ramps. I used it on an extreme sports clip as I felt that it would be appropriate there. I originally learned how to do this from a friend of mine who's also an editor and who used it in one of his videos, and I thought it would be an interesting effect to show you guys today. Feel free to use this effect wherever you please, and send me a video response where you guys have been able to use this effect successfully or any other effects I've taught you in previous tutorials. Until then, stay creative.